All right, here we go. DJ Podcast. <laughs> Chicago Bears, man, winning today. Um, 12, 30 to 12 versus the Las Vegas Raiders. <clears throat> An exciting game. A game where, where the Bears handled the entire game the entire guy, time. Uh, like they got they got out to the lead and then just kept going. It felt good. Uh, Tyson Bajan, uh he he looked really good. Uh, stats for him: twenty one for twenty nine, one hundred and sixty two yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. And honestly, I didn't see very many like. Almost picked off moments. Um, average of 5.6 yards per play, which that's kind of what the Bears game plan is. And if we're averaging 5 yards a play, that means that every two plays we're going to touchdown or uh, field uh, first down, right? <clears throat> and then here it starts. It's going to start this week. Fields or Bajan? That, that's, that's what you're going to That's what you're gonna be hearing this week. That's what it's going to be. Um... Obviously, I think that if uh, Justin Fields is showing that he's healthy, they start him. They start him the next game because they still want to see what he's all about. But now, if he starts struggling, do you switch to Tyson Bajan to win that game? Some of the things we <coughs> some of the things we saw this week with Tyson Bajan was impressive. When he was throwing it out of bounds or trying to throw it away, he was trying to throw it away with purpose towards a wide receiver. When he ran the ball, it wasn't out of panic. It was out of necessity, but it wasn't out of panic. He ran for a couple of first downs. Um, uh, let's see. He had three carries for 24 yards, no touchdowns as, as a runner. But when he ran, he ran with purpose. It wasn't. It wasn't to to make some fantastic flashy play. See, Justin Fields should sometimes, I think, learn to just get the first down and then do your job as a quarterback, which is to get the ball to the playmakers. It was a really, really exciting game. Um, Deonta Foreman, I hopefully said his first name right, Foreman, 16 carries, 89 yards, 5.6 average, two touchdowns. Um... He really showed up this game. He was in it, you know? What else did we see from Bajan? When he threw the ball, every single time he threw the ball is with purpose. It wasn't just to throw it away, just to throw it away. He would throw it low and outside to where only his receiver can get it, or his receiver was not going to get it, but the defender was not on it. That's one thing that I noticed from him. Uh, Bajan had a super spread out um, um, targets to the players. DJ Moore with the most, with nine. Followed by uh, Foreman with five. Mooney with four. Um, Scott, this guy Scott. Tyler Scott coming out of nowhere. Um, he had two, two, car- or two receptions for uh, 19 yards. And we saw him last week. I think him and Bajan have a pretty good um, chemistry together. Obviously, throw the ball to DJ Moore, it, it's a pretty good option because he's he's a true he's proven this year that he's a good asset to this team that we traded for. But now we're gonna start it. We're gonna start the we're gonna start the talk. Fields or Bajan. The next game, Fields comes back in if he starts struggling or is. Is um is uh, Matt Averflus? Is he gonna pull the trigger on on Fields if we start seeing? You know, what if he what if he throws three interceptions? I bet you he switches right away. What if he fumbles the ball twice? It's not completely unlikely that Fields is fun. He fumbles a lot. That's another thing we didn't see from Bajan. No fumbles. So we're seeing some really good stuff. Um, the offensive line, I would say, acted like normal. There was a few plays where, yeah, you have to get the ball out. You have to run. You have to you have to create time with your feet. And that's another thing. I think Tyson Bajan, 
Bajan is creating time with his feet where, where Fields is just taking off and running. Seeing if he could be the all-star. Seeing if he could be <clears throat> this elite quarterback that everyone talks about. Fields has a lot of pressure because he's so highly talked about. But when I see him out there, it doesn't look like Bajan. Bajan's going back. He takes a two-step drop, three-step drop, and he fires. If he doesn't see anything, he's going through his two or three progressions. If he doesn't see anything, he runs, but he runs with purpose. He runs out of bounds so he doesn't get hit. He he'll, he slid once to uh, end ended. It seems like his runs are smarter, more purposeful, not as flashy, not as fast, not as zigzag cutting agility, but it's really good. You know, it's it's not like I was disappointed with it. You know, and once again, I want to say, well, if the Bears are playing, if the Bears are playing like this, maybe we can see something. Maybe, just maybe, we can make this year a successful year. Like if I'm looking at the upcoming games, the 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 next game is the Chargers. I think the Chargers, when I first immediately look at it, I think the Chargers can beat the Bears. But if they're playing like this, they got it. That's a 50-50. The Saints, I watched the Saints game the other day. Um, they, I think they, it was the one they were playing Las Vegas. Was that the, was that Saints in Las Vegas? No, that was Saints Jaguars. Derek Carr, he, he looked like he was confused out there. Honestly, I don't think the Saints played all that well when I was watching them. Uh, so I think the Bears, I think the Bears can scrape together win versus the, the Saints. The Panthers should be an easy one. Then we come to uh, Detroit. Detroit's the key. If the Bears want to make anything of their season, it's beating Detroit this year, and that is not said very often. We know Detroit to be the the bottom team in the NFC North. Usually, it's the Packers at the top. The Packers are two and four, right? Or the Packers are. Um, yeah, the Packers are two and four. Minnesota's two and four. I thought Minnesota would be a whole lot better. The Bears are two and five. <clears throat> they haven't had their bye week yet. Their bye week is week thirteen. It's a late, late bye week. It'll be interesting to see what they do during that bye week, especially if Fields continues to play bad. And then you got this performance from Bajan. I bet you we see Bajan start another game this year just to see what he can do. See if he can do it again. But all I'm saying is if you really think about it, if the Bears can beat Detroit, they play them, they play them um, the 19th, November 19th, and then they play them again December 10th. They, they play them uh, pretty much twice in, in three weeks. So in twice in three weeks. So um, can, can the Bears beat Detroit? If they beat Detroit, then they're going against Browns. Now the Browns have... A really good defense. But can we squeak together a couple of really good offensive plays? If you get to if you get to uh twenty two, twenty depends on it depends on the Bears defense. If they play like they did today and get some interceptions and some turnovers, it'd be a close game. That's a fifty fifty game. I think the Bears beat uh Cardinals. Um but once again, honestly, I'm kind of I'm kind of comparing these games as if Bajan was in there playing playing how they're playing today, or if we see good Justin Fields, good Justin Fields is is probably better than Bajan, but if Bajan is more steady, <laughs> I almost think he was better than Justin Fields, in 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 a lot of different ways. He just looked faster, more confident. He kind of he kind of understood the game. Uh, I want I want to keep him. That's that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I, I'm I'm kind of hoping you go in there next year with him being the starter, and uh, maybe they draft maybe the Bears draft a quarterback, and it's a and it's a three way quarterback um, competition between Justin Bajan or <laughs> Justin Fields, Ty, Tyson Bajan, and and number three who they draft. Wouldn't that be exciting if the Bears had three quarterback options going into next year? And then, uh, and if you don't see it for Fields, maybe you trade them. See what you can get for them. Um, then they got the Falcons. I think they could beat the Falcons. 
and they end they end with the Packers. I think that's our time to beat the Packers. It, it, especially if Bajan, I think Bajan beats them. See, from what I saw with Justin Bajan this week, or Tyson Bajan, <laughs> Justin Bajan, with Tyson Bajan this week, was that he he could easily be somebody's number one. If he was a rookie this year, going out onto someone's team as as the new rookie starting quarterback, I would say he looked really good. And that's kind of what he was. Um, was this his first NFL game? This was his very first NFL game. That's crazy. Coming in on the Chicago Bears. Um, <laughs> actually, he says that he played two games. Uh, two for Chicago. For two, oh uh, yeah, he came in. He came in the middle. This was his first NFL start. Yeah, that's right. He came in the middle of the game last week, and I believe he went ten for fourteen. Uh, just this, just this year, he's 31 for 43, 72 percent completion rate, 245 yards, 5.7 yards per attempt, one touchdown, one interception, uh, a rating of 84, and a QBR of 49 and a half. That's his first game, uh, the half game. He didn't play very well. He played better than Fields. Uh, that that's the funny part. Better than Fields, and Fields played three quarters. That's something I touched on a little bit last week. So what are we what are we seeing? Are we are we seeing are we seeing the next great backup quarterback to come out and and show us um show us something r- really special? I'm not certain. I'm not certain hundred percent what we're seeing because uh as a Bears fan we we've we've learned we've learned how to try and measure our our uh emotions. This year, I've called this year a roller coaster several times. Uh, the, the Justin Fields roller coaster, up and down, good, good Justin Fields, bad Justin Fields. Where is he throwing the ball, throwing interceptions, fumbling? To wow, this guy could be a top ten in the league. From what I saw from Bajan, he could be a top ten in the league. He would easily make it to like that. Is he number eleven, number twelve? He would, he would make it to that, that, that level. With the way he played today, and that's the thing I want to see him again. Now we already know as soon as he's as soon as Fields is healthy, he's gonna be out there. He's the drafted one. Tyson Basin is the undrafted undrafted quarterback. That that's the thing, and I think the Bears are lucky to have him. I really hope they don't trade him. I I think I think if he started a whole season, if he started this season, I think we would have had. Uh, the Broncos game for certain. It would be easy to be at three wins right now. Um, you know, do do they win Kansas City? Kansas City blew us out. If I remember the Packers game, it would have been it would have been competitive. The defense is coming alive here. We had uh, two interceptions. That that's that's crazy. It was like the first time in like a year that that we had uh, that we had interceptions. <laughs> It's kind of sad, but all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Bajan's out there, and and the defense is coming alive. It does that have anything to do with it? It just it kind of felt like it, right? It kind of in in a weird way, it kind of felt like it. Yeah, so we had uh, Jalen Johnson with two interceptions. That that's that's awesome to finally see some interceptions on this defense. It's another one of those things that's taken like a year. It's crazy. The, the 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 defense to go as low as that. Tremaine Edmonds, he had one he had one interception as well. Uh, Valus Jones Jr. Valus Jones Jr. finally not botching uh, kicks. He's not a punt returner. He's a he's a kickoff returner, and we're finally seeing a little bit of his, his speed. Plus, I believe I believe he had a couple of receptions. He had one reception this week, and I think he had one last week as well. So using him a little bit. Out of nowhere, Tyler Scott. We've seen some good stuff from him. Uh, Mooney Mooney had a couple of catches. He had four four for 32 yards. I'd like to see it go to him a little bit. I think he's better than than uh, than the Bears use him. So all around, I just have to say, this game felt good. And I never had that moment of throw the ball. Right, I never had that moment of a Bajan throw the ball. 
you know, we're just waiting there for our, uh, five or six seconds. You know, it, it felt good. It looked good. All around. I know it was the Raiders. The Raiders are three and four now. But it's... It... It felt kind of even better than the um, than the Washington game, the Commanders game. It just had a very smooth smooth throw to it. <laughs> I like I like Bajan pumping it to the crowd. Boy, he has he has some real charismatic. I'm not saying Justin Fields doesn't have it, but but Bajan has some real charismatic. I wouldn't mind seeing him uh, get Bajan get uh, more. More play time this year. He looked really good out there. So, you know, it was kind of my favorite game of the day, honestly. But um, it was good. It felt really good. The Patriots, surprising win over the Bills, 29-25. I didn't see that coming. That was a huge surprise. The Lions today, 38-6. to Hey, the Ravens are pretty good. But we've been saying this entire year, Lions. A great team. Best team in the NFL. Best team in the NFL doesn't score six, six points. Doesn't score six points. The the Giants over over the Commanders, 14-7. to seven. That was a shocker to me. So, you know, we, we've seen some interesting games. The Broncos edge out uh, versus the Packers. So that, that, that you see, it's those type of things. They, they kind of give you hope, like, hey, maybe, just maybe if the Bears take it in there, they'll be playing for a wild card. Boy, I, I don't want to get too excited because we already know what the pattern's going to be. This is actually going to be the disappointing part of this year, and it's frustrating that I'm saying this and that I'm admitting it. It's going to be, put Be- we're all going to be begging to put Bajan in, and they're going to they're gonna stand behind Justin Fields like they should. Technically, it's what the team should do to see if he was worth the overall draft pick uh, from uh, 2019, was it? 2020 draft pick. It, it, it's, it's hard to remember at this point, honestly. But here we are, <laughs> and it's going to be frustrating. Um, all, the, all the Chicago Bears fans are going to be yelling for Bajan every single time Fields throws an interception, fumbles the ball, uh, it gets sacked, runs in nowhere, runs into the sack, and just doesn't look like he's he's making the right progressions, making the right throws, throwing behind the receiver, throwing in front of the receiver. We're all going to be yelling for Bajan. And I don't blame you because this game looks so smooth. Like, I, I kind of hope, I kind of hope that we go another, I kind of hope that we go another uh, week with Bajan. I want to see it. I want to see it. That would actually make me feel excited. So I, 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 I think the positive we'll see out of this is that, uh, look, this year, you can kind of say this year is a, a done year. But I think this year, hopefully, the Bears make the right the right move. And uh, especially if Justin Fields continues to play the way that he's been playing, up and down, roller coaster, uh, looking, looking like the champ one week and looking like the dud the next week. I hope they move on to him. If from from here on, if, if unless it feels like lights it up and shows us exactly all his talent comes together, and, and we see we see what we think Justin Fields should have been, and he has to throw some really solid games for me to not say, hey, let's move on. I'm 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 kind of I I am I'm leaning towards let's move on to uh, Bajan this year. Let's see what he can do. Let's draft another quarterback next year and have a big con- controversy. I want to see a three-way, uh, um, a three-way competition between uh, Bajan Fields and a draft pick. <laughs> That's what I want to see. Whoever it may be, I want to see it. I want to see somebody. I want to see this coaching staff really aim for. That's what I want Ryan Poles to do. I want Ryan Poles to show me. That he can finally draft a Bears quarterback. Let's let's. I I I kind of think get rid of Eberflus. Maybe you give him one more year. Um, if if not, you pull him this year. I don't want to see if if it's leaning even fifty percent in Ryan Poles' mind. If it's leaning even fifty percent, no, 
I think the 51% should be towards no. I think Ryan Poles deserves another chance. I've seen some good uh, trades out of him. Uh, the, the, the Carolina Panther trade for DJ Moore worked out. It's going to work out perfectly. Um, we're going to have a really high draft pick next going into next season. The Bears aren't going to be that good. Uh, the overall record should not be that good. Even, even at this point, where are we going to get to? Six wins. Um, it won't give us a top NFL. Uh, it won't give us a top pick for next year, an earned pick for being the worst team in the league. But we'll have we'll have the Panthers pick. I think they'll be picking number one or number two next year. And I think Poles can can pull some of his magic out of a hat. Something he's doing, something he's saying, um, is pulling together some good trades. Has he made all the best moves? No. And people have pointed out bad. Uh, moves by Ryan Poles, but overall, I think he deserves another chance, and to uh, continue continue on with the what he's doing. Matt Eberflus, in my mind, is a fifty fifty. I kind of want to see it uh, switch. Let's get a new offensive coordinator in there. Actually, I want to see a new offensive head coach with a defensive coordinator. I that's that has always seemed, especially recently. Um, Matt Nagy was deemed to be an offensive head coach, and they then they had uh, Mike Marks in there. I believe was his name, Mike Marks in there. And and a de- when I feel like when we have defensive coordinators, I I would rather see an offensive head coach with a defensive coordinator who can really try and 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 get things done, get get things done. Um, it wasn't Mike Marks. Boy, it's gonna bother me. Um. It was it was uh, Chuck Chuck Pagano. He did really good as the defensive coordinators for the Bears. Uh, I think he went to the Broncos as the head coach and kind of failed as a head coach. But I but that doesn't mean he's not a good defensive coordinator. Coordinator. So I want to see the offensive guy with an all star defensive coordinator. I want. Um. I think. I think the Bears um, offensive coordinator this year. Is kind of a bust, Luke Luke Getzey. I think he's kind of a bust. I, I I think is this his first or second year? Uh, I think it's his first year. Um, two years. This is his second year. So I don't know. Let's maybe maybe the problem is Fields. Maybe Fields and uh, maybe Getzey and Bajent mix better together. So I which which we would we, we would learn. We would learn that. From putting him in another week, and see that—that's what I want to see. Maybe Luke Getzey's good, but Justin Fields isn't all that good. Um, and I've been going on the 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 notion that Fields is good, right? That 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 was kind of my hope. My hope was Justin Fields would be good, and and so far it's panning out not to be good. I just don't want to leave my initial my initial position on Justin Fields. Without being totally confident that um, that he's not the right person, and this year will tell us. I guarantee you, by the end of the year, I'll have a one hundred percent solid, uh, non flippable um, opinion of Justin Fields, and it's heading towards trade him and see who else we got. Anyways, uh, it, it's great to see a Bears win. They're two and five. Uh, maybe they catch up with the wild card. Uh, I'm going to see you next week. DJ Podcast, David Jaynes, um, saying bear down. Let's let's go. Let's 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 see the Bears show us what we want. And and I want to see um, I want to see Bajan in there again before the season's over and see what we got on the back and the backside. Anyways, bears down. See you next week. DJ Podcast. Thanks for listening.